You can start. A warm and a graceful morning to one and all. Welcome to CVE, a Olympic Initiative, a e-learning platform for field veterinarian. Now I will uh, request Mr. P. Karunanidhi, Senior Vice President, Olympic Pharmaceutical Limited, to introduce our today's eminent speaker. Over to Karunanidhi, sir, please. Yeah, good morning to all the uh, participants and uh, panelists, and also Dr. Uh, professor who is going to speak today. So very, very good morning. And it is a Sunday morning. And thank you for sparing one, one and a half hours of your uh, Sunday for your development as well as uh, giving opportunity for our uh, Narlotka to give his experience with field veterinarians. Dr. Baba Sahib Vaman Rao Narladkar he is an in charge professor of university head in department of parastology in Parvani Veterinary College. Dr. Narladkar is 1988 batch graduate and in 1990 he did his post graduation in Marathwada Agriculture University, Parvani. So after completing his studies, he started his career as a veterinary officer, NM Com Limited Pune in the year 1990. So naturally, he is more interested for his teaching and guiding his student. So that character in him made him to join in Marathwada Agriculture University services as a junior veterinary officer in the year of 1991. So further, he was posted as an assistant professor at Parvani and Udgir Veterinary College. So based upon his experience and his interest for teaching and his uh, interest for research and his commitment, then he got promoted as associate professor in the year of 2003. So further, due to his commitment, continuous effort and contribution to the teaching and to the university and he has become professor in the same uh, discipline. At present, he is the university head for the Department of Parastology. So he has done some foreign tours as a study tour, visited UK in 2001 and studied in following labs of veterinary entomology in UK, Natural History Museum. Center for Applied Entomology and Parastology in Keeley University and Department of Veterinary Entomology and Parastology in Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. So special efforts for development of entomology through learning of advanced techniques at various renowned labs in UK and creating at par infrastructure the world standard infrastructure at Veterinary College Parvani and through which impressive research work has been undertaken by Dr. Nadlatkar. His academic contribution, he has taught 26 batches of UG students so far. And his effort continues, his, uh, you know, many more batches he will be able to teach and guided 22 MBSC students and three, P, three PhD students. He is a paper setter, an evaluator for UG, PG, and PhD degree programs of several universities in India. And he is an external examiner for undergraduate, master's, and doctoral PhD thesis. He has got best teacher award three times, best researcher award twice, and various other appreciation award three times. His 30 years of research experience in veterinary parastology in livestock has led to establishment of classic, classic parasites museum for UG PG teaching. He has created a museum based on his study tour and based on his research that has helped him to establish like that. Infrastructure like insect tree, zoom stereo, stereoscope, fly proof net as a unique facility for teaching and research were created through various research projects. 
established veterinary entomology lab for pg student and for research purpose in the same college first time research on fly proof net with hurricane ventilator as a physical barrier more than 20 years of research in veterinary entomology so he has completed five research projects 110 research publications 10 review articles and five lead papers so excellent project report on livestock pest by dbt chennai sorry new delhi attended more than 21 conferences presented more than 50 contributory papers in eight lead papers so by this time you might have understood that what kind of academician and researcher and the person who is having a field experience is going to speak with you today's speaker was awarded and recognized in 16 prestigious awards few i would like to mention that gandhi shastri gold medal from ivj in 1998 excellent grade project report dbt new delhi in 2012 ns rupra memorial award in 2017 and fellow of indian association of advancement of veterinary parastology in 2018 grant uttejan dvitya puraskar in 2005 best teacher in 2008 by maharashtra animal and fishery science university nagpur so today speaker is a very good academician researcher and field uh, veterinarian so i am sure his knowledge sharing with field veterinarians will be of great help to field veterinarians in handling the field cases thank you very much please pay your attention and over to today's speaker thank you <coughs> sir good morning to everybody uh, dr mr p kurmani the senior vice president dr santosh sinde dr naresh kulkarni and all olympic team firstly i thanks to p kurnani ji who has given my introduction image larger image larger than the original he has introduced me in such a fashion that instead of lecture the field veterinarian they are listening my bio data only thank you very much for good uh, good words you have offered to me actually i must thanks to your team uh, uh, p kurnani di rajesh sharma ujjm dr santosh sinde dr sanjay latkar dr amit singh dr thomre and dr naresh kulkarni who took a large efforts to travel from mumbai to parbhani for my services so i must thanks to olympic team who has given me the opportunity to share few words with the field veterinarians friends i am a academician come researcher come field veterinarian because i like to share so me whatever the research i used to conduct in my laboratory and i am proud to say that whatever the research till date i have completed that all the research i have taken it on the field lab to land and land to lab both the concept i am running because i used to visit the land and whatever the problems that are there on the land that i am going to address through my research and that's why i am a person not only a pure academician but i like teaching also so uh, great opportunity provided by the olympic team i must express my sincere thanks for that and i will start my presentation now friends you have to listen me for one and a half hour and i will take care that even after the one and a half hour also you will tell me that yes you can continue further so uh, i request uh, dr sanjay and kulkarni sir for presentation next please good morning 
my topic for uh, today's speech is recent advances in ecto and endoparasite control in livestock friends you know the livestock our honorable prime minister had declared that with uh, in 2022 the doubling the farmers income and uh, i tell you doubling the farmer in uh, income concept cannot be conceptualized unless and until the help from livestock is taken and that's why the livestock has to play a big role in sustainable agriculture why because you know previously the total agriculture is based on the power of the bullocks now that particular system has gone and now we have transport that particular system into the factory system otherwise our total agriculture was based on the livestock the integration of livestock into cropping pattern is a must because you see nowadays you might be because i am giving the recent advances i must give the one information also the indian government has formed a nine research centers one consortium research center is there but there is one research that it is a base down the bullock research that is the bull bull energy power that related research they have established nine centers and for three states it is in parvani it is in maharashtra so now the scientific community has realized that for agriculture the drought for drought type of the energy has to be explored from the bullocks and that's why i tell you without livestock we cannot even dream that the doubling the farmers income from the field can be possible and that's why the livestock is a biggest complement to the agriculture and hence being a veterinarian it is our duty that to maintain our livestock in healthy position once you maintain the livestock in the healthy position that automatically that healthy livestock will definitely serve in the agriculture and that's why it is mandatory for the field veterinarians to keep the livestock healthy actually yeah, ivri where one vision document is there in which they have told that it is a bank on hooves so you can realize in one word how it is now i will come to the my topic straight away now when our honorable prime minister says that the doubling the farmer income in 2022 that means how that particular income has to be doubled because whatever the today's income is there that economics i will not go in detail but you have to increase it by 6.5 times and to manage that particular income one has to look into the factors which are responsible for reducing the income from the our lifestyle and one of the factor that today i am going to discuss is nothing but the lifestyle i tell you in the field every time in india it is addressed that the indigenous animals show the distress indigenous animals show the repeat breeding indigenous animals do not give the that much type of the conception and other gynecological uh, status what is the reason every time the that particular problem of anistress or repeat breeding is addressed through the gynecological angle but i tell you i had a solution if you address that particular problem with the parasites definitely there is no need to bother about the anistress and repeat breeding like problem and that's why the taking care of the parasite taking care of the parasite is the biggest problem is the biggest address to this particular problem now let us go in the economics of this particular thing now friends in this particular era the problems of livestock origin or the agriculture origin they are not addressed by a single method and everywhere one approach has been developed we call it as the integrated approach and in the integrated approach whatever the possible solutions are there for any problem that all possible solutions shall be tried in a harmonious manner so that that problem can be well addressed and one single factor if you try you know 
you, you take the insecticide, you take the antibiotics, or you take any any type of the solution, the resistance is developing day by day, and that's why any weapon is with you. It has to be used in a judicious manner, and in the integrated approach. integrated approach for control of parasite integrated approach for the control of the any disease integrated approach for the addressing problem of agriculture anywhere it is not written that the chemical solution shall not be used or the allopathic drugs has not to be used only it is written that they should not be used indiscriminately because indiscriminate use is responsible for producing the resistance to that and once you have got a very good molecule in your hand but when you use in discriminately you know the resistance develop and one good weapon which is in your hand you have just lost it i i remember still when i was in the seventh standard at that time to grab one mosquito for the practical it was difficult our teacher has told that bring one mosquito for demonstration but we cannot gather one mosquito and suddenly we have attacked around the mosquito with the ddt the day has now come no mosquito is responding to the ddt not even to the many chemical pesticides uh, but now you show me the place on the earth fair mosquito is not there because you see in the lower strata maybe insects maybe helminths or maybe any other living organisms if you attack them to extinguish them from the earth they make the necessary changes at their genetic level mutation takes place and their population explosion takes place and that's why any weapon when you are using for addressing maybe the parasite maybe any pest maybe bacteria maybe virus keep in mind you use everything that is chemical pesticide or the chemical type of the drugs antibiotic like that but keep in mind judicious use is the important thing which you have to follow so in the integrated approach why i am going for the economics in the integrated approach one concept is there that you first of all assess the economic level we call it as a economic injury level or economic threshold level eil or etl because you see suppose one or two mosquitoes are there in your home are you going to that take that much steps so depending upon the population of the pest maybe the worms maybe the insects maybe the ticks are like that depending upon their population see how much economic losses they are causing and once you see suppose economic loss is 10 rupees and your cost of the treatment is 4 rupees the uh, that particular animal owner will agree to spend 4 rupees at the cost that he will gain 10 rupees but if your cost of the treatment is 12 rupees and the gain is 10 rupees who will afford that and that's why whether it is a worm whether it is a tick or whether it is a pest you have to first of all assess the economic importance and i am definite that for endo and ectoparasites nobody thinks about the eco working out the economic losses and unless and until you go for the economic losses you shall not adopt any integrated practice now here by taking few examples i want to just highlight how the economic losses roughly can be estimated now i tell you suppose as per the our uh, 2019 data annual report of our central government they have prescribed that the indigenous cow gives a 3 liters of the milk cross bred cow gives around 8 liters of the milk and indian buffalo 5.62 liters of the milk now by scientific report it has been established that in the cow if the helminthic problem is not addressed 7.82% of the losses are going to be there if you roughly calculate it that means from one indigenous cow to 0.25 250 ml from cross bred cattle around 750 ml and from indian buffalo around half liter of the milk you are losing daily and here in the third column i have described that how much loss can be there you just see one indian buffalo if you take care of the parasitic problem you are gaining 25 rupees and how much how much cost you have to incur for the deworming within one month or two months 
hardly you have to spend 50 rupees so that means if you take if you roughly calculate this particular estimate definitely i tell you the deworming or the problems to be addressed with the deworming type you will gain more than the what you are incurring on the treatment cost now here also again one more chart i have just uh, shown here that the you know sheep and goat they are considered as a museum of the parasite even if you address a problem of hemonychosis you can just see how much gain you can earn from a single sheep and goat one sheep from hemonychosis 1228 rupees per sheep per year then you can just imagine if you address this particular problem i will not go in detail of all this this presentation is with you you can later on study and even after my delivery of the lecture and when you study this particular presentation you can call me on my telephone number at any time so these are the economic losses now after seeing the economic losses you will realize that this problem must have to be addressed now let us come to the what are the different types of the nematode parasite and the trematode cystode parasites of the livestock under the livestock ascaridis fungaloids strongaids lungworms pyruroids and phyloroid nematodes and trichuris these are the seven major groups of the roundworms under the trematodes three major are there liver liver flukes amphistomes and cystosomes and friends i have covered all these names the of the parasite which are very much prevalent in indian conditions i am not just giving the by referring the sole way only the whatever the parasites are in england or whatever the parasites are in other countries these are the parasites very much prevailing in our indian conditions and the tape worms monogia expansa monogia benedini avitalina stylegia all these are prevalent cow calf buffalo calf kids and lamb they do suffer from this particular tape worms and in case of the tape worm one more group is there that our livestock work as a intermediate host for this tape worm and this tape worm belong to the human being dog and cat and among which the best the very important parasite is the echinococcus granulosus which is worldwide zoonotic important and central government is spending lakhs and crores of rupees for the control of even only echinococcus granulosus and our animals they are acting as a intermediate host and only thing which we are following that we are throwing the carcasses of our domesticated animals on the ground and the stray dogs has the, got the uh, access to that that is the only problem to control echinococcus granulosus so this is the range of the helming parasites now here again i have enlisted in detail what are the different gastrointestinal parasites of the sheep and goat gastrointestinal parasites of the cattle and gastrointestinal parasites of the buffalo now let us come to the parasitism problem we have seen economic losses caused by the parasites we have seen which are the different parasites they are present in the animal and now whatever the pathogenesis they causes we in, in short term we call it as a parasitism act of the causing para, parasitic infection in case of the livestock we call it as a parasitism what it causes reduced appetite this is the biggest problem in the livestock caused by the parasite and for which cholecystokinin mechanism is playing the role friends what happen generally we used to speak anorexia generally we used to speak reduced appetite but keep in mind though animal is apparently healthy it is not suffering from the viral disease bacterial disease then why it is showing the reduced appetite the reason is that the parasitism and how that parasitism is responsible for the causing reduced appetite only one cholecystokinin mechanism is there the parasites which are present in the intestine they stimulate the secretion of cholecystokinin and excess cholecystokinin levels in the plasma they act on the brain center and they reduce the appetite of the animals to the 30% level and this is the biggest problem played by the gastrointestinal parasite trichostrongylus is very responsible for this particular thing coming to the they cause the relaxation in immunity how they cause the relaxation in immunity because large quantity of the nutrients are sucked by the parasite when nutrient loss nutrient deficiency is there automatically no need to tell that there is relaxation in immunity then coming to the subclinical parasitism which is the biggest problem in india i tell you if the subclinical parasitism in india is addressed properly 
no farmer will ask to the government give me subsidy on this particular crop because that much is the importance of this subclinical parasitism because whatever the law says that is the reduce in the milk yield reduction in the fertility problem all these they can be addressed by addressing the subclinical parasitism subclinical parasitism influences on bone bone metabolism through changes in phosphorus and calcium absorption there is reduced bone growth reduced milk yield reduced winning weights delayed puberty decreased fertility all these problems are related with the subclinical parasitism then weight loss i will not go in detail anemia that you know humongous like parasite they are uh, taking the large quantity of the blood then abortions many parasite particularly toxoplasma responsible for abortion and nowadays neospora caninum parasite has come it is also responsible for causing the uh, abortion and friends particularly friend large number of the parasites they are present in the intestine they used to suck the trace elements also <laughs> and you know the role of the trace uh, minerals and elements in the enhancing fertility of the animals i am very sorry so now let us see possible mechanisms once again it is a revision of this humongous contractors you know they cause the anemia ustertegia they causes marked increase in the abomasal ph because they cause damage to the glands present in the intestine so hydrochloric acid is not secreted by the parietal glands and pepsinogen is not converted into the pepsin and large quantity of the plasma proteins they are lost in the fecal matter and this is done by the ustertegia trichostrongylus just now i have explained one mechanism that is cholecystokinin increase in cholecystokinin level in plasma attacks on the brain center and there is reduced appetite then esophagus stomum they cause the fibrous type of the nodules on the intestinal wall which results into the reduced bowel movement as a result of which the, the, the there is either constipation or there will be uh, diarrhea then all these gastrointestinal parasites they are responsible for mineral sucking they used to take this they due to which there is a deficiency of these minerals and i have enlisted here how they play the role in the fertility because you know these all trace minerals they are required in the fertility and the here are manganese selenium micro and macro elements i will not go in detail the mode of action of even selenium you know the role of this so all these all these due to the deficiency of nutrients trace minerals all it leads to the problem of infertility and in indigenous cattle i am sure why our indigenous animal conservation programs are not running with full speed the reason is that the pure farmers are not interested to maintain the indigenous animal and why they are not interested because in fertility problem and why in fertility problem because veterinarians they 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 they, they are not properly addressing this particular problem of the subclinical parasitism and as a result of which in fertility is the main culprit behind behind reduction in the fertility problem of our animals so Uh, I, i am just going through in detail about this particular problem before that let us will address this particular problem how this can be addressed by the taking care of helminth parasite now let us come to the one more important point diagnosis of helminthic diseases friends you all learn everything in the ug still it is a revision my whatever the audience they are listening this particular uh, this particular webinar i know they are very expert in the field they are a good veterinarian they are brilliant veterinarians still it is my duty to take review of all these particular methods so that your knowledge will be refreshed and you did it in the uh, did it in the ug whichever is the institute you have passed out at that place you have been taught with these techniques but let us have the review diagnosis of helminthic diseases is mainly depend on the coprological examination fecal examination 
then blood examination also because filarial problems has to be diagnosed by the knots method then recently the immunological techniques has come up uh, just in the previous slide i have enlisted the immunological techniques then from my angle the coprological examination and post mortem examination these two are very important one in the post mortem examination suppose you handle one sheep and goat and you come to know that large number of the antistomes are in the rumen and reticulum the rest of the stock has to be uh, deworm for the antistomes so rumen and antistomes abomasum humongous and other gyatar right small intestine all the types of the strong gills mesentery cystosomes are there and from liver flux can be collected so by post mortem examination or in the live, live animals coprological examination that coprology yeah, fecal examination has to be done by two ways number one first of all grossly the fecal fecal sample has to be visualized in which you will find the segments or the proglottids of the tapeworms and if there is not there then tapeworm problem is not much there then you go for the microscopic examination and under microscopic examination flotation and sedimentation technique these are very important techniques i am sure that veterinarians can do it at on the field level also because every dispensary nowadays is provided with the microscope and rough estimate because you see in the cattle and buffaloes after 3 years very rarely the deworming is needed but at that time you must have to assess the fecal sample whether there is need of the deworming or not and for that purpose these two techniques flotation technique and sedimentation technique is a must so at least my request to the all field vets for post mortem examination fecal examination grossly or flotation technique and sedimentation and technique has to be done at least in one one month where ever you are working just gather 10 to 15 fecal samples of the animals reported to your clinics and go through that you will definitely get the idea in your area whether deworming is needed or not needed so these are the eggs of the different types of the parasite just for your interest i have kept it here the tapeworm eggs are there they have got the hexaganthi uh, embryo but for the tapeworms no need to go for the egg you can just by seeing the with your naked eye the fecal sample you can detect the proglottids of the tapeworms and particularly i am of the opinion that in the lower age kids lamb cow calf and buffalo calf when they are taken for grazing first time and first monsoon season they are freshing it is mandatory to give one dose of the praziquantel uh, like the uh, drug that that takes the care of the uh, tapeworms and definitely i am uh, sure that the tapeworm problem can be addressed by the tree deworming then here fasciola x are there and pistomes now let us see the deworming what is the deworming shall be done with following three requisites if it is a cattle and buffalo epg has to be done and in the adult animals 5 to 10% fecal examination must be done so that you can assess the status of worm problem in your area in case of the sheep and goat we consider them as a museum of the parasites in them epg hamacha chart dax score and clinical symptom these four can be together applied that i am going in detail about that now let us go for the sheep and goat you here you can see it is a dax score dax score means what how much the posterior part perianal part is soiled with the fecal sample generally you know in sheep and goat the pellet form is the fecal sample but if it is coming in the liquid form and if it is soiling the posterior hind quarter then according to that grade you can judge yes deworming is required our another criteria is applied for the hemochosis that the these first three status just open the eye see the mucous membranes and if you find they are reddish in color then come to the conclusion that yes that much anemia is not taken place but when they are becoming whitish here one one picture i have kept it here 
total white type of the mucous membrane then definitely you come to the conclusion that yes the deworming is needed so that score hamacha chart fecal examination all these three they are required for judging whether deworming is required in case of the sheep and goat and if it is a cattle and buffalo epg and fecal examination is a must but there are certain thumb rules on which i am also going to come now coming to the cow and buffalo calf in the lower age after the birth it is mandatory that on the seventh day you give the first treatment first deworming without assessing any fecal sample because from the research it has come to the conclusion that yes 70 to 80 percent calf they carry toxoparietary infection from there in the womb of the mother only and hence to control the mortality of cow and buffalo calves it is mandatory to have the deworming first deworming on day 7th of the age you can address the problem of toxoparavitolarum this toxoparavitolarum problem is not present in the sheep and goat then the another problem when first time the cow calf buffalo calf kids and lambs all these four when they are taken on the grazing land first time when they are grazing they get the infection of the aerobated mites as a result of which heavy tapeworm infection is there so you have to just give the first deworming when they are taken for the grazing with the drug which will address the tapeworm problem now let us come to the subclinical parasitic infections which are of great economic importance subclinical means i tell you you can just judge yes they are not producing any clinical signs and symptoms in sheep and goat but what happens always subclinical problem is there and that's why in case of the sheep and goat and in large animals cattle and buffalo also if you just judge this particular problem and if you deworm them you will find you will get the significant effect in terms of the health status of the animals and improvement in the fertility status suboptimal uh, suboptimal milk production is there due to the subclinical parasitism suboptimal reproductive performance is there there is immunosuppression and numerous studies have demonstrated that improved productivity and economic benefits of controlling either external or internal parasite in cow calf herds now just to see two to three more facts those dosing using different almin anti almintics is always beneficial to improve the reproductive status of the animal these these reported an increase of 7.7 to 11.2% in the milk yield 2.5 to 7.8% in the milk fat and 9.9% in the milk protein and all these facts and figures i am giving based on the research findings i am not just apparently saying like that the narsapur sir has carried out one research and he has observed that in a herd of 100 buffaloes they found that 10.29% increase in the milk yield 1.5 g percent increase in the hemoglobin levels on the 14th day post treatment once they have given the deworming this much they have achieved in seven animals that they get they become negative on the fecal examination when treated there is increase in 7.82% milk and 0.85 g percent in the hemoglobin so you will realize the importance of deworming in case of the animal one more fact i want to tell here you know that the heifers they are going to come on the heat first time when they achieve the weight of 250 kg and not based on the age but when you undertake the regular deworming schedule in the heifers they will come earlier in heat 44 days that means they will achieve the 250 g kg of the weight earlier 44 days and you can just imagine if you are getting the milk yield 44 days earlier how much benefit of the farmer so similar type of the improvement in the pregnancy rate also is due to the uh, deworming also and as a result of which now we will go for the integrated parasite control in the beginning i have made it clear that the integrated approach is applied for the control of any parasitic 
type of the problems the days has gone that only one uh, only one type of the uh, treatment you are observing but a integrated approach has to be conducted now regular fecal examination designing of the deworming schedule i am going to speak on the how the deworming schedule is to be designed then grazing management that is the also more important one then control of intermediate host in case of the spirulina nematodes and follow up well designed deworming schedule now what is the concept of deworming many times we used to speak the deworming deworming is never undertaken only to treat the existing problem of the parasite but it is equally important when you are treating the animal sheep goat cattle buffalo with the deworming definitely the contamination of the pastures with the eggs of the parasites you are reducing and that's why deworming has got the two way importance treat existing infection and control future future type of the parasitic infection the primary purpose of parasite control is not to cure the sick animals but it is also to reduce the levels of pasture contamination now how the strategy for sheep and goat and cattle and buffalo for the deworming is to be decided friends keep in mind the deworming schedule for cattle and buffalo is totally different deworming schedule for sheep and goat is totally different for sheep and goat throughout their life from birth to death you have to carry out the deworming but in case of the sea cattle and buffalo deworming is always not needed after particularly particularly one year or one and a half years of the age those animals which are not getting exposed to the helminthic infection they won't need any type of the deworming and that's why deworming schedule for the cattle and buffalo deworming schedule for the sheep and goat is totally different now for cattle and buffalo we'll see first of all you have to profiling the herd what is the profiling of the herd that you see whether that particular animals needs the needs the deworming or not and how it has can be decided whether they are taking for the grazing whether they are stall fed whether they are previously sensitized or whether they are newly exposed to the that particular grazing land depending upon that you have to judge whether they need the deworming or not that is the first factor second factor is that check at least 5 to 10% fecal samples so that you will judge in a particular herd whether deworming is needed or not and several key points here we'll see if the lactating herd is in total confinement that is the stall fed then treatment is probably unnecessary if the herd is in total confinement but the dry cows are on pasture then definitely one deworming is needed if the herd is held in total confinement dry cows are also in confinement but replacement heifers are raised on pasture then again one deworming is needed that means through these several key points i want to stress only one point that in case of the cattle and buffalo when they cross at the age of one and a half year in the adult animals check before giving the deworming because previously sensitized animals they develop the different the type of the resistance and deworming is not much needed but similar is not the scenario with sheep and goat sheep and goat is called as the museum of the parasite and all the age group they need the deworming now here i have given the deworming before going to this particular chart only one point i want to stress here now suppose you are planning a deworming in a particular area friends one very important point is there suppose the deworming schedule previously it is formulated somewhere and that has been hanged on the wall of the any veterinary dispensary and according to that particular chart deworming is carried out that days has gone previously the days was treat routinely one guru mantra was there treat routinely that particular aspect has gone now and now the era has come treat when necessary treat when necessary i will take one example only suppose you consider you are living in a one dispensary and that particular land total land is not irrigated one 
and it is a based around the only the rain rain fed system or the rainfall water now you tell me during the months of summer there is no irrigation no pasture land is available for the grazing then how the infection of helmin parasite will take place and why we are going to advocate the deworming that means for each and every geographic area the in that particular area deworming schedule shall be worked out depending upon the schedule of monsoon suppose generally monsoon is stated that it is commencing on the 7th of june but if on that particular 2020 suppose it has started in the month of august and till the month of august no pasture land is available why you are giving the treatment that means three to four factors before scheduling the deworming shall be taken into account and deworming schedule shall be different for that particular geographic area for that particular year and hence status of the monsoon that particular geographic area all it shall be taken into account and the deworming schedule shall be decided suppose i give you the example of our maharashtra state or maharashtra state or the particularly where i used to belong is a maratwada region where during the summer there is totally drought that means february onwards till the june no grazing land is available no much irrigation is there and nothing is available for the feeding in this area we don't advocate any type of the deworming because there is no chance of the infection and second only one point in case of the cattle and buffalo has to be remembered in mind that is peri parturant deworming that is a must one because you know the helminthic larvae they used to remain in the dormant position in the body of the cattle and buffalo and as soon as there is relaxation in the immunity during the peri parturant period the all the larvae they get into the adult and they used to discharge large quantity of the eggs on the pasture land and hence it is a must in the cattle and buffalo peri parturant deworming remember in cattle and buffalo you may not conduct any deworming but peri parturant deworming is very 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 essential so let us go for the deworming schedule for cattle and buffalo the while you are talking about the deworming you must concentrate on epg fecal examination of 5 to 10% sample peri parturant deworming is must and during grazing season if required after the examination of 5 to 10 fecal samples you can give the deworming to the even adult animals also for calf but that include the buffalo and cow calf seven days first deworming then grazing when they are let loose for the grazing check their fecal sample and have a deworming for the tapeworms and then on the monthly basis till they become the 6 months of age deworming has to be carried out for going to the sheep and goat epg and pamachachar and i also enlisted you the dac score and all these things shall be applied but in case of the sheep and goat early deworming in the cow kids and lambs is not needed because toxocara infection is not present in case of the sheep and goat but in all the age groups when kids and lambs let loose for the grazing start that particular period you have to carry out the deworming regularly only provided that if grazing land is not available and total dry summer is there during that particular period you can withhold the deworming otherwise deworming is regularly needed in case of the sheep and goat so with this particular clues we have to chalk out the deworming this particular slide i have already covered now i will skip the many uh, slides and now how the deworming schedule is to be planned depending upon the geographic area depending upon the raining condition of that particular year you have to go for the checking out the deworming now friends when i used to say it is a integrated parasite control that means for hell means not necessary that you have to go only for dewormers but remember very few herbal plants they are used for the deworming purpose and hence 
integrated parasite control doesn't say that you should not go for the chemical deworming only it suggests if light infection is there you for the phytotherapy if heavy infection is there depending upon the status of the infection use judiciously the chemical dewormers that is the one thing second important point is that always don't use the same dewormer why i tell you suppose you attack to the parasite with the same dewormer that means it may develop the resistance but my few friends they understand that the trade name or the uh, other name has been changed that means it is a change of the dewormer it is not like that i am basically speaking about the principal drug suppose one principal drug is there in the dewormer that particular drug is acting on the glucose metabolism of the helminth parasite next time go for the dewormer which is acting on the nerve system of that particular parasite and when you make such alteration that one time you are using on the glucose mechanism one time you are giving the drug which act on the atp molecules of that particular parasite metabolism one time you are giving the drug which act on the nerve metabolism by that way you are not allowing that parasite to develop the resistance and hence after 3 to 4 dewormings change the class of the dewormer not the trade name change the class of the dewormer i am not interested to speak about the trade names and i am not suggesting that the you choose this trade name or that trade name only i am suggesting change the class of the dewormer depending upon its mode of action what the dewormer you have given previously with the x mode of action go for the y mode of action and by that way you can avoid the resistance to the infection and when light infection is there you can go for the phytotherapy like aloe uh, aloe hum sativum that is the garlic neem tree like that here i have just enlisted uh, papaya the seeds are also used for this deworming and like that and there are few more alternatives also that is the condensed tannins there are so many plants in indian tradition having the tannins then nematode trapping fungi if the spores of that particular fungi has been fed to that particular animal they will appear in the fecal sample and whatever the larvae they are develop in the fecal sample they used to trap it then application of the urea also suppose 5% urea has been spread on the pasture land it kills the larvae of the animal and then nutritional supplement is the largest factor because as and when you give the proper nutrition it increases the immunity of the animal and thereby it can stop the uh, it can stop the infection of the uh, helminth parasite so here i have given the examples and all these things i have prepared the detailed type of the powerpoint presentation but each and every slide i cannot cover you can read it and if you have any doubt you can again contact me on the telephone so nematode trapping fungi i already covered then i will go for the these are the how they trap how they trap the larvae that is shown here then urea application the 5 gram percent if spread on the pasture land 100% mortality humongous larvae then all the copper oxide wire particles are also given then uh, i will go for the earthworms dung beetles they should not be killed they are also responsible for reducing the helminth tick infection now the earthworms destruction of the eggs and larvae by digesting them dung beetles they are also making the spread of the dung and by that way dung get dried off and the larvae cannot develop so these have also got the importance in the now one more concept is there i will just discuss and then i will go for the ectoparasite there is one term you are listening clean pasture and safe pasture clean pasture means it does not mean that the pasture should be washed with the water clean pasture means it carry no infection of the parasite no helminthic larvae are there such a type of the pasture can be prepared suppose you have got a one pasture land and it is heavily contaminated then what you do whatever the pasture land is there you take it under the grazing and the adjacent land which is under the grazing for crop you just allot it for the pasture and by that way you can make the clean pasture by alternate grazing so many types are there by plowing and reseeding 
by changing the the pasture land into the uh, crop land crop land into the pasture land and by that way you can produce the clean pasture there is another concept we call it as a safe pasture safe pasture means pasture is there it is contaminated but the infection is very light one and that much light infection if animal get it will develop the immunity but it will not cause any type of the economic losses so clean pasture and safe pasture these are the two recent concepts and this is the way of the deworming i will not go in detail here i have put some photographs how the, the mixing type of the in mixing type of the grazing is there here you can see cattle and sheep and goat they are grazed together because many species of the sheep they will not infect to the cattle cattle species they do not infect to the sheep and strip uh, strip grazing that means there is one very good concept of the grazing suppose you have got a one acre of the land you make into the five strips and graze them on the strip number 1 take it on the five so that from five again one number strip they will arrive after the one month by that time whatever the larvae developed from the egg they get died because they don't get the host and that means it is called as the pasture spelling or pasture stripping alternate grazing with the different host species alternate grazing with the different types of the age group of the same host species then alternating the land under the crop and pasture all these managemental practices in addition to deworming if you integrate together i am sure that you can reduce the problem of helminths and if you are in succeed say so you will succeed in reducing the problem of helminths definitely health of animals even our indigenous animals pure bred animals their health will be okay they will not face any problem of the infertility and the good livestock we can build for our development of india thank you very much now i will go for the ectoparasites control of cystor parasites you need the control of the aerobated mites and for the control of the trematodes these are the snail species responsible for the transmission of the trematode parasitic infections particularly in india amphistomes cystosomes and liver fluke they are very much prevalent and remember depending upon the infection you have to choose the dewormer according to the whether it is liver fluke whether it is amphistoma or whether it is a cystosomes and accordingly if you give the treatment you can wipe out these particular diseases so snail control is there and frequently phil vets used to ask me the question which particular which particular dewormer shall be safe during the pregnancy particularly i can make one comment albendazol is not safe during pregnancy and for rest of the fenbendazol is safe during pregnancy and the status of the rest of the dewormers i have given here you can go through this particular chart now coming to the after the after the helminth parasites the next class of the parasites importance is protozoan parasites for them a effective drug therapy is there and protozoan parasites are brilliant enough that they show the clinical symptoms that's why the veterinarians and farmers they used to take the treatment for that and hence i will skip protozoan parasites i will straight away go to the ectoparasites under the ectoparasites within half an hour i will try to give the justice to the ectoparasites i have given somewhat more time for the endoparasites because i want to speak more particularly on the concept of deworming and that particular concept i have tried to clear it in your mind now let us come to the ectoparasite in the ectoparasites five range five groups are there biting and non biting type of the flies you know the musk flies non biting stomoxis tabanus mosquitoes phlebotomus simulium all these are they are the biting flies the another group of the parasite is fleas third one is lice fourth one is the tick and fifth one is the mites among that the important one are the flies and the ticks now let us see how they cause the economic losses suppose you take the house fly the research tell that due to the infection that is the presence of house flies it reduces the 3.3% of the losses why it is losses because they cause the annoyance to the animal when there is annoyance 
they cannot concentrate on the grazing when they cannot concentrate on the grazing it definitely there will have less food intake and as a result of which 3% milk loss is there suppose you consider during 2012 the total milk production was 132.43 and if 3.3% loss is due to the only house flies how much it is going to cause the loss you can see 16606 crore loss in india only due to the house flies i will come to the another parasite biting me just pulicoid where i have done that particular experiment that 18.97% this experiment i am going to discuss later on if 18.97% milk loss is there from one cattle you can see uh, one cattle 50 rupees loss on daily basis the from buffalo 35 rupees loss daily basis only due to the biting midges only due to the biting flies and in india 95463 crores annual loss is there due to the biting flies and hence here i want to impress only we are of the opinion that yes if livestock is fed with the good nutrition they will give the ample quantity of the milk friends it is not like that when you are treating the bacterial viral diseases because they are life threatening but at the same time yepto and endoparasitic problem is so great that whatever the economic losses are there that is only accrued due to the endo and yepto parasites and hence concentrating on the control of endo and yepto parasite itself your efforts in the building of the nation by enhancing the production from the livestock that much i can say now this is the experiment which i have conducted now just to come to the tick third important enemy of the livestock it is estimated that if animal is carrying 100 ticks it causes the loss of 23% milk production and if you consider that due to the only tick problem in india a 1 lakh 1 crore 15 lakh 748000 crores per annum we are losing due to the ticks only rather than that in the extension type of the article extension type of the speeches i used to tell to the farmers whether you are rearing the cow for feeding the ticks or for milk production we don't understand several times because that much heavy tick population is present on the animal body and hence tick problem ectoparasite problem we have to address with integrated approach that i am going to discuss within half an hour now what is integrated pest management one very important term that is integrated pest management very much coined in the crop pest why it should not be implemented in livestock also so what is integrated pest management just i have put here one photograph that you are listening some music there are several instruments they are run together but only one good voice you are listening and you are getting satisfied how it is there because it is a integration of all these instruments in a harmonious manner in the same way whatever the available methods of pest control are there if you use compatibly harmoniously together we can achieve a great effect that is the integrated pest management and hence it is in uh, our great uh, great singer uh, honorable lata mangeshkar ji used to say mile sur mera tumhara to sur bane hamara if you integrate all these methods definitely i i, I, I promise you that we can achieve a good type of the pest control then how it is to be done now you know the five types of the ectoparasites are there and what is pest feather pest is a parasite no fen a any type of the pathogen feather bacteria feather virus feather parasite feather tick feather fly when they trouble to the livestock not only to the livestock to the human and crosses economic injury level to that particular pathogen we used to call it as a pest in marathi it is called as kid so pest and we have to address when they are achieving the level of population to the pest at that time you go for the chemical pesticide 
otherwise when they are below pest level go for the physical herbal botanical all such a type of the biological control you go there and when they have achieved the economic injury level at that time it is duty to use chemical pesticides and suddenly you control them but in indian conditions whatever my little experience is there i am always observing that on the animals ticks are always on the pest mode because each cattle is carrying more than 100 ticks and in that case by using judiciously chemical pesticides along with integrating the physical and herbal pesticides you have to minimize the population of the ticks now here i have just shown the photograph you being the very experienced on the field you are rather knowing rather than me also this is the mite this is the flea this is the lice and this is the mange mites then this is the tabernus flies phlebotomus flies culicoids this is the hematopota fly and this is the simulium flies all they are existing in india and due due to the global warming each and every state experiencing all these types of the ectoparasites and then certain flies they want trouble but there are larval stages used to trouble that is the gastric miasis is caused in case of the horses then estrus ovis you know in case of the sheep and goat and then the third third type of the larvae are there that is the uh, warbler flies now how the this particular ectoparasite they trouble first of all they cause anaesoris secondly they are the mechanical and biological vectors and thirdly whatever the insecticides are used for their control they are also causing damage to our environment means due to ectoparasites three way damage is caused number one first of all due to their bite there is anaesoris and worries second is they are transmitting the very potent diseases viral protozoa like that you know the ticks transmit the filariosis and babesiosis early chosis and thirdly whatever the control measures you are adopting for this particular ectoparasites they are causing damage to our environment hence when you are handling the ectoparasite problem do it judiciously do it thoughtfully let us and that's why one very important term that has come given by the world health organization it is nothing but the integrated parasite management trends in the health means i have used the term integrated parasite control here i am not saying control it is a management that means when a population of certain fly is there by adopting physical means by adopting herbal control by adopting biological control by adopting uh, bacterial control you try to keep them to the minimum level we call it as a management don't try to extinguish any species of ectoparasite it results into the drastic changes because that ectoparasite that insect make the changes at their genetic level and their population explosion takes place and that's why you always address the problem of ectoparasite by keeping objective in your mind to minimize their population to the lowest level and we call it as a integrated pest management we are never said integrated pest control integrated pest eradication like this terminology is not used now uh, if it is done and if indiscriminate use of chemical pesticide is done it is resulting into the resistance and resurgence of the pest as a result due to the global warming there is a pest ecology change there is encroachment of the habitation now you see why the problem of pest is increasing i have enlisted these factors one example i will quote kaishanor disease transmitted by hemophysalis spinigera tick why that particular tick is encroaching to the human population because in their dwelling we have encroached up as a result of which they are coming into the human population and they are transmitting the kaishanor disease then increasing trend towards the organic food 
nowadays why integrated pest management is necessary because we have to control you have to reduce the use of uh, uh, chemical pesticides because people are nowadays interested in the organic food and to avoid bio accumulation and bio magnification of the chemical pesticides because whatever the chemical pesticides you are using in the nature when they is to go into your fat they remain as it is and they are transmitted to the next generation we call it as a bio accumulation and bio magnification due to all these factors one single therapy of chemical pesticides will not work integrate the all factors together try to minimize the pest population and we call it as integrated pest management what is the fundamental of the integrated pest management only one important point i have told that treat only when necessary in place of treat routinely do not undertake a regular operation it is like a regular operation whether it is needed first of all try suppose i will quote one example suppose you are sitting in uh, you are sleeping in one uh, one room one or two mosquitoes are there is it necessary to go for the chemical pesticide spray no just have a curtain to the mosquito curtains to your windows get use the mosquito coil sorry use mosquito net and by that way try to manage one or two mosquitoes but still their population is increasing try to clean your drainage channels from where the mosquitoes are coming and still their population has increased it is not allowing you to sleep and it is transmitting the certain diseases then immediately go for the chemical pesticide spray and if you use in such a ladder basis the, the resistance to that chemical pesticide will not occur and such a good weapon will be in your hands and that's why instead of implementing only one method of chemical pesticide or any other method go for integrating several methods together so that you can address the problem of ectoparasites and the ticks i will not go to this particular slide now how it is done i i i one one experiment which i have carried out here i am interested to share i have built here one shed and that total shed has been total shed has been covered with a mosquito net and that that net was so fine that even the small insects here you can see on the net how many culicoids how many mosquitoes they are gathered because they are not getting entry inside now when such a net is applied to the uh, to the say said definitely there will be problem of the aeration also in that case you can put the such hurricane ventilator on that particular said and you will surprise when i have counted the movement of the animals which are built in such a said now those animals which are kept outside such a said and they are facing the bite of culicoids mosquitoes phlebotomas throughout the night when with the help of video camera we are spot out within 10 minutes animal has to carry out 176 movements of their body tail ear skin etc but when animals are kept under such a shed which is covered with the fly proof net you will surprise the one animal has carried out hardly 10 movements in the 10 minutes time that means in a 10 minutes 150 movements of the body can be saved if you save that much of the movement that particular energy wastage will not occur and definitely as that particular energy will be utilized for raising the milk production and when i have run such experiment you will surprise i have got 18.97% hike in the milk only by application of fly proof net said and hence one of the control measure is that you use such a type of the nets for the animal seeds so it will give it will control the entry of the ectoparasites in the shed and definitely animals will be free from the ectoparasites and there can be rise in the uh, rise in the milk production now coming to the this this particular movements and all these things i have explained this particular total experiment where uh, you can refer this particular uh, powerpoint presentation later on now some other other type of the methods are also used 
Now you can see here I have given one photograph. Drainage channel management or the whatever the uh, whatever the water rain or other rain it is getting accumulated in that particular cell. It acts as a good breeding place for the several flies. So keeping that particular shed dry and the flower shall be covered with the wood chips or ground corn cobs which will avoid the moisture. It is also the one of the control measure. Now here you can see a regular disposal of the fecal matter in the dung pit is also a one control measure. And here I want to impress here and I want to suggest only use of the pesticides or only use of the medication is not the way out. Go for the physical control, go for the biological control, go for the chemical control, integrate all these three so that effectively you can control the ectoparasites. Now drainage channel management is also one of the way so that the breeding of the several flies will not occur. Then coming to the application of the some of the herbals also. Now, wherever herbal is available, neem seed kernel extract is there, you can go for. Where it is not available, you have to go for the chemical pesticides. But if it is available, go for the herbal control also. Go for the biological control, you know, bacillus thuringiensis is the best used. Even in the agriculture side, bacillus thuringiensis variety kurstak is used. That particular solution also can be used. Uh, then sanitation and hygiene, even one a very small exercise I will suggest. When you are taking fecal sample of the cattle and buffaloes and you are just dumping it into the dung pit. Here, one of my PhD student has worked on this. Hematobia is the flies which is number one pest of the livestock in India. This hematobia fly used to bite 48 times in a day and used to suck the blood. It is a small fly looking like a stomoxys fly or looking like a musca fly. And its breeding place is, as soon as the dung is dropped by the animal, immediately she used to, de she used to deposit the eggs. Now, whatever the dung, if you have collected, and if you, if you have just uh, dumped in the dung pit, after dumping this particular fecal matter, cover it with a polythene-like cover. Now, whatever the larvae that develops from that egg, they will not get aeration and they will die there. We have experience here near about 70% population of this hematobia flies we can cover just by covering the dung pits. So these are the small experiments, then herbal pesticides, then biological pesticides, and here also the mode of action of the biological pesticide are there, then fungal pesticide is there. So I will not go in detail about that. Then the larviparous species can be used. And of course, last is by using the chemical pesticides. So as and when the population of any pest goes above EIL, then use the pesticide. But whatever the pesticide you are using, it shall be used judiciously. And the extension work shall be carried out that whatever the chemical pesticide you are using on the, on the animals take utmost care because of one of my experiences there that one particular solution of the pora shall not be used for the buffalo but that particular fellow has used on the buffalo it has caused the drastic change so while suggesting the chemical pesticide perfect concentration and perfect application site has to be told to the farmers so that judiciously you can reduce the control of the ectoparasites and now the last Within 10 minutes, I will go for the tick management so that I will summarize my lecture within one and a half hour. The tick problem is very biggest problem in India. Uh, several research articles, you can go through it and several things, everybody is realizing this particular problem. Now, for tick control, the farmers are, or the, uh, always they used to ask, give me such a medication which can be spread on the animal and so that the ticks will be wiped out. And always they used to suggest take some chemical, they used to spray on the animal body and after 15 days again they used to approach to the same veterinarian, uh, sir whatever the chemical pesticide or whatever the medication you have given, it has not reduced the ticks. Friends, that is not the problem. 
whatever chemical pesticide you have suggested they have sprayed it on the animal body the ticks has been killed everything but whatever the ticks population existing in the said new larvae has been hatched out and they have approached to the animal and again new ticks has come up and the farmer will consider after 15 days that whatever the chemical pesticide he has sprayed it has not worked that's why as and when my friends this is my earnest request to you people because you are the real yodha of working on the ground i am the academician i am just sitting in the one institute but you are the real like a corona yodha you are the real yodha working on the field suggesting to the people that what is to be done and what is not to be done and hence my earnest request to you people is that as and when you are suggesting the control of the tick go for the two things always ask them rather than targeting the animals target their said targeting the said suppose take example of the rhipicephalus micro plus one host tick now the female after the engorgement get dropped down in the cattle said she used to hunt some some site under the uh, under the roof or under the somewhere like mangers or like any other dark places and one single female will give rise 4000 eggs if you target that 4000 eggs in the said you are stopping generation of 4000 new ticks now you tell me by targeting the one cattle or one livestock you are hardly killing 100 ticks but if you are targeting the said you are preventing the birth of 4 lakh ticks and that's why it is always suggested that the operations to be performed in the said must be advised followed by spraying on the animal body and what is to be done that i will just tell you now here no need to is no need to tell that they have crossed the eil now this is one of the cross bred photo and here i have put this currency notes here suppose you address this particular problem you will earn this currency notes and how the tick problem is gravid that you can just see and these are the eggs now you can see if you go to the one cattle said and if you just hunt under the mangers and dark places i am confident that if the 10 animals are there at least a 4 lakh eggs of the ticks are present there and hence one by one systematic approach can be done for this control of the ticks first of all go for the physical control that in every season at least you suggest them suppose in india in maharashtra three seasons are occurring so summer winter and monsoon ask them in each season for three consecutive weeks in the morning hour clean the said totally and after cleaning the total said whatever the that particular dirt you will collect you burnt it outside the cattle said it will burn lakhs of the eggs of the ticks and in the morning hour you ask them to burning of the said and after three such consecutive days ask them for the herbal herbal spraying and lastly one chemical spray in that season i am confident that 100% 70% of the tick population will be vanished so for ticks physical control is there one more control biological control is there one more control herbal control is there one more control fungal control is there and then chemical control is there five weapons are with you integrate them in a very integrated harmonious manner i am confident that at least you will save 90% tick problem so physical control by burning the tick eggs herbal control go for the neem seed kernel extract or other any herbal go for the fungal control metarhizium and the bivaria both the fungus they are very good go for the bacterial control in my laboratory we have carried out the several trials with bacillus thuringiensis variety kustaki that particular solution is very much available with the agriculture people they are using it on the crop paste same if it is spread that is under trial still i have not recommended for field use but within a year or so i will come to that conclusion also and the metarhizium and bivaria powder they are very much used for the crop paste 
they can be used and then finally the chemical pesticides it does not mean integrated pest management doesn't tell that go for don't use the chemical pesticides one it says depending upon the number of the pest population use judiciously first of all the physical biological herbal fungal control and if it crosses the economic injury level go for the chemical and use it all in a judicious and harmonious manner in a compatible manner what do you mean by compatible manner that i want to speak here suppose you are using the neem oil before neem oil that particular fungal shall not be spread suppose you are using the metarhizium powder and that fungus has been spread after that the second treatment should not be the neem oil because neem oil is an anti fungal that means all the whatever the weapons you are using they are just quarreling with each other so they should be compatible with each other such a solution shall be used and by that way by integrated approach physical chemical biological you can control the ticks if suppose is the fly control you want to have the physical control then uh, the drunk dung pit management then said management then drainage channel management and then animal body in the same way for tick management two way shall be targeted at a time animal shall be targeted at the same time breeding site that is the particularly the cattle said because the cat ticks are used to drop on the pasture land as well as on the dry, in the cattle said but whatever the larvae they are produced on the pasture land they are very difficult to cover because there is a biggest land but at least cover the ground that is the breeding site of the ticks in the cattle shed and cleaning of the cattle shed and regular burning of the dirt collected is the best way to control or to minimize the tick population so with this integrated approaches uh, in the nut cell last summary these are the breeding sites under the manger how they are there that i will go just in the uh, neem uh, this uh, particularly the fungal herbal then how they cause the uh, damage to the eggs of the ticks that i have photographs i have shared here each and every point i cannot cover here but the photographs i have put it here because you can refer later on this particular powerpoint presentation but in the nut cell i will summarize within 2 3 minutes my talk i have tried to give the justice to the problem of endo and ectoparasites in the endoparasite deworming is very very important one and in case plan the deworming for each and every year depending upon the status of the monsoon depending upon the availability of the grazing land depending upon the animal husbandry practices adopted in that particular area and hence don't use universal deworming schedule plan deworming schedule according to the animal according to the geographic area according to the status of monsoon second second point i want to stress here that do not use always single dewormer change the class of the dewormer after four five dewormings or three dewormings one one dewormer which is use uh, acting on the energy metabolism second time you use the uh, dewormer which is acting on the nerve origin then for the control of tapeworms and the for the control of the um, trematode disease that is ampistome liver fluke or cystosome be specific for that particular anti helminthic only only one anti helminthic cannot cover all the trematode cystode nematode like that for phyleroid nematode separate type of the anti helminthic has to be used thirdly coming to the ectoparasites in the ectoparasite biting non biting flies has to be addressed with integrated approach and physical cultural managemental biological herbal fungal bacterial and chemical all these weapons shall be used in a compatible manner to control these problem and for ticks two way attack is needed that is the attack on the breeding sites in the cattle said 
and simultaneously attack on the animal body rather than that i will say if you do not concentrate on the animal body but if you concentrate in the cattle said definitely i am sure that you are controlling the controlling the particularly the endo and ectoparasites friends i have tried to give the justice to this during my speech i must thank sincerely to the alambic and their team the kurnani ji sir rakesh sharma then dr santosh shinde sanjay latkar ji amish singh ji then thombre then naresh kulkarni and all their team who has given me this opportunity to share my views with all field veterinarians across the country thirdly i must thanks to all participants who has spared their one and half hour on the holiday and fourthly i want to just confess that any word during the during this particular speech if i uttered in not intentionally but some some bad word some uh, cause some type of the uh, ill feeling to you people so excuse me for that particular bad word i have tried to give i have tried to deliver in a very narrative manner the integrated approach for endo and ectoparasites so thank you very much for patience listening and now it is time to have the question answer friends one thing i will admit many times several questions are coming from the field veterinarians for which i am also not knowing the answer but i will be in touch with you my email id is also given here i will again go to the library i will refer several literature and whatever your problem whatever your question is there that i will definitely address that is my promise thank you thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, for this uh, such a elaborative and applied presentation sir now i will request dr amit singh to post the questions on the screen so sir can read and answer otherwise and uh, amit can read and sir can answer go to dr amit singh uh, so first question i will come metarhizum anosopoli now the spraying of this uh, metarhizum anosopoli is done in the morning hour or in the evening hour that is one thing second thing where the humidity problem is there suppose konkan region no problem of the humidity is there but suppose maratwada region or certain dry regions of the india is there before spraying of the metarhizium how a spraying of the water in that said it creates ample humidity and then spraying of the metarhizium is done that is the one thing then how can we control ectoparasite immunologically uh, the that that particularly uh, vaccine part i have not yet covered here because there is no problem to cover vaccine part what is the reason of plucking and chewing of self and others sir i cannot uh, answer this particular question because it is related with the management and please let us know the deworming thumb rules for different like that that particular uh, pro, that particular question i am interested to answer only thumb rule i will tell you that do not have a regular deworming schedule for each and every year plan according to the onset of monsoon suppose monsoon has taken place in the month of august in my area i will start deworming first deworming from the august onwards though the schedule of the onset of monsoon is june but this year monsoon has took place in the month of august why i should give the deworming in june and july month so the first thumb rule is there take into consideration the geographic area second availability of the pasture land and third the onset of monsoon season and fourth which livestock is in question if it is a sheep and goat more deworming are required if it is a cattle and buffalo the deworming up to the heifer age are required later on up after only 5 to 10% fecal sample examination go for deworming otherwise don't go for unnecessary deworming and the last thumb rule peri parturan deworming is very essential in cattle buffalo sheep and goat it avoid the pasture contamination and hence deworming in peri parturant period 
and it is my suggestion that in ship and boat i am always not describing before delivery because why they don't care for the which dewormer they are using and unnecessary many times the abortion results and that's why it is safe they ask them that the deworming after the parturition after the delivery so these are the thumb rules of the deworming said next question please uh, sir uh, one more question has been asked specially for calves so they have, dr mujib has asked i will tell you for calf on the day of seventh seventh day of age first deworming with particularly piperazine is essential because toxocara vitolorum infection occur in the womb of mother and even after the 10 days large side worms are present in the intestine and that's why the first deworming is essential on the day 7 second deworming for tapeworm is essential as soon as you take the calf for the grazing because aurivated mite infection takes place and then regular deworming for the nematohelmin is essential thank you next question please next question please sir, yes sir one more sheet is there these are certain questions why fenbenazole uh, is not used in human being for deworming i cannot answer the question related to the human being how can we conduct the preliminary evaluation of subclinical parasitism sir four thumb rules i have given suppose in case of the cattle and buffalo the 5 to 10 percent fecal examination and if possible when just a thumb rule i will tell you if you detect under the microscope up in 10 field more than three eggs of the cattle and buffalo go for fecal sample go for deworming without going for the epg because estimation of epg many times on the field level go difficult for sheep and goat i'll tell you if pellet form pieces are there and they are soiling the hind quarters one rule second thing animal is not having the temperature and third thing if their mucous membranes are becoming whitish and pale go for deworming this is the thumb rule then can ante Antenatal, antenatal vaccination prevent infertility in female animals uh, i cannot answer this for particular because before vaccination generally deworming is done if five percent urea solution is spread on the fodder crop is there damage chance to fodder i have not asked for the fodder on the pasture land you can go for five percent spraying of the urea with all care because you know for fodder is also treated with urea treatment for increasing its digestibility. So restricting to the 5%, if you cross this limit, it is a poisonous. But if you limit this urea treatment, definitely it is useful. How to control abortion caused by the parasites? Only one thing I will tell you to control the abortion caused by the parasite. Number one, select proper dewormer during pregnancy. That is one rule. And abortions caused by the protozoan parasites. Only one thumb rule is there, that the animal should not have access or the stray dog should not contaminate the pasture with their fecal sample, which is very difficult in Indian conditions. What is the treatment here? So, what is the treatment for false gid? It is asked by Dr. Mano Sharma. Well, Fragi quintal treatment is the best one. Fragi quintal. And second thing I will tell you, those who are taking sheep and goat for grazing on the higher grounds, higher ground that means on the uphills, best way is take naphthalin tablets, Dambar Golia. In Marathi, it is called as the Dambar Golia. Naphthalin tablets just powder them for some some type of the oil and apply on the nasal part while you are late losing for the grazing this sheep due to that particular naphthalene tablets uh, spray uh, application that act as a good repellent that particular flies will not come and they will not deposit the uh, larvae around the nasal cavity this is the treatment for the, and when the problem is there, that means you have detected the larvae in the nasal cavity, go for the project treatment. 
I think Mano Sharma, you are satisfied with this particular my answer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. These are certain questions. Uh, there are few more questions which have been yes. shared by participants. But sir, yes. those questions will be mailed, sir, uh, because those questions have been shared after preparing this presentation, this uh, question pre presentation. Thank well, you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. They can be sent on to me on email, and even my phone number is given in the presentation. They can openly discuss with me. I have no problem. I am happy that with my suggestion, uh, they can address the problem of the ecto and endoparasite. I'm very happy. So thank at you, any sir. time now they I... can contact me. Thank you, sir. Now I, I would like to hand over the session to uh, Dr. Santosh Sinde, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you, Amit. A warm and uh, graceful afternoon to Honorable Ratkar, sir, and all the participants. Actually, I remember the quote. Well begin is half done. Actually, during this COVID pandemic, LMB Veterinary Division has started one small initiative that is CVE, that is a Continuous Veterinary Education Program for the Field Veterinarian Series 1 2020 in the month of May. And in that, uh, I will uh, happy to share that uh, Honorable Markande sir, which is Associate Dean of the COAS Parbani, has done our uh, inauguration. Uh, uh, conducted That's first right. webinar first webinar for the alembic sir after that we, after this uh, webinar we conducted 36 webinar for field veterinarian and in that 15 webinar from the ecv series sir apart from that we conducted five uh, training pro, uh, two uh, national conferences online conferences with the as a knowledge partner with some uh, kovas parbani and pgis akola then three a workshop or e-courses for field veterinarian. Apart from that, as a knowledge partner, we participate in 14 farmer uh, training program. It may be piggery, sheep goat, large animal, uh, rabbit, all this farm, uh, farmer training program, we, we are associated as a knowledge partner. And this year, sir, uh, 2021, this ECV series 2, 2021, is started with uh, Naratkar sir webinar it is from Kovas Parbani. I am confident that, sir, whatever number I said, 36, five for national conference uh, uh, training program and farmer program, we will cross this time that number also, sir. Thank you very much for uh, uh, pa 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 presenting this webinar in this ECB platform and giving Alembic an opportunity to uh, give the knowledge sharing platform to the field veterinarian, sir. It is my privilege to propose vote of thanks speech and acknowledge the contribution of those who really work hard to make this webinar successful, sir. On behalf of all the participants, Alembic Pharmaceutical Limited, myself, Dr. Santosh Shinde, express my sincere gratitude to Honorable Narkar, Narkar sir, for such an informative and applied presentation. Sir, your presentation will definitely help field veterinarian, student, faculty, researcher, so that they can apply this integrated approach in ecto and endoparasite control, sir. In future also, we will take benefit of such interesting and useful session so we can upgrade our knowledge and we can serve the society. Last but not least, I would like to thank all the participating veterinarian, especially during the Sunday, though it is Sunday, more than three, 370, 380 people were continuously on, on board watching this, uh, attending this webinar. I would like to thank Mr. P. Karunanidhi, Senior Vice President, Alembic, for continuous guidance and support, Mr. R. K. Sharma, AGM Sale, and his entire Alembic field staff for making this webinar successful. From my team, I would like to thank Dr. Naresh Kulkarni, Dr. Gangadhar Thomre, Amit Singh, Sanjay Latkar for making this webinar successful. Thank you once again to Honorable Naratkar Sir and all the participating veterinarian. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks to Alembic team. Thank you, sir. And thanks to all participants. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir.